Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hole in One Show podcast presented by PXG. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. We got a special one for you today. In our first segment here, we welcome in Dave Lorenz. He is a our greens keeper, green superintendent at the Fargo Country Club, and we're going to talk about closing the golf course and the year that was, and things that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of chores to be done here between now and the next few days to close up the golf course for the season. And uh, also in our second segment, we're going to have PXG trivia and the gridiron golf segment with Casey Crumwoody. We touch on a lot of things. We touch on our picks. We touch on our picks for this week. Uh, a little bit of uh, Caleb Williams, uh, USC, and the Vikings and Kirk Cousins. But right now, I'd like to say congratulations to our PXG trivia winner from last week, Ian Foster. Ian Foster sent the email in with the correct answer, which was Tom Kim, 21 years old, won the Shriners Invitational. Congratulations to Ian. And we will be sharing the PXG trivia question to start the second segment. PXG trivia question will be starting the second segment. The winner of the PXG trivia will win a brand new hat and a dozen PXG golf balls. Right now, before we get into our uh, first guest, I'd like to point your attention into 32 Customs. Dot com. 32customs.com. This is really cool. Check out these custom ferals. This North Dakota born business is changing the game when it comes to the end of your golf club. No longer do you need to sleep your way through boring old black ferals at the end of your golf club. Get your favorite design, your favorite team, your favorite color, anything to spruce up the end of your golf club. Go to 32customs.com and enter promo code HIO show to get 25% off. Now I need to say congratulations to Josh Galvin. Josh Galvin plays for NDSU, and a week ago today, he shot himself a tidy little 62 at the FCC. Now, the key about that score is that is tying the course record of my course record. I blacked out one day and, you know, shot a 62, had a hole in one. It was really a special day, and this guy goes out, what a round, shoots a 62. Now, there's a detail in this round that's important to share. Josh was late for his tee time. So he started on the third hole. And if you look at this scorecard, obviously open with a birdie. But if he started on the third hole, that means the last four holes of his day, he had the 17th hole, par five, and he had the second hole, par five. And at the end of the day, boy, I'm lucky to still share the course record. He parred the 17th and parred the second for a 62. That just shows you how great he was playing. Left a couple shots out there. I mean, he was on 59 watch, for goodness sakes. But great, great round. Josh Galvin, uh, the NDSU guys are awesome dudes on the golf team. They're really, really good, but they're even better people. And I'm happy for Josh and his 62 at the FCC. What a round. Congrats, bud. And I uh, just wanted to give you a shout-out on the pod. Nice job. Nice job. Now I'd like to welcome in the man who manicured that place. Clearly, Dave, the, the whole locations weren't difficult enough that day. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> no, Dave, welcome in. Uh, Dave Lorenz, the green superintendent at the Fargo Country Club. Thanks for being on the Hole in One Show, bud. Thanks for having me. So, Dave, let's get some background with you. Where are you from and how long have you worked at the Fargo Country Club? I'm originally from Bagley, Minnesota, uh, born and raised in that area. And, uh, you know, I've been here in Fargo for 17 years now and here at the club for that same amount of time with the last two being the golf course superintendent. Yeah, so talk about uh, talk about fighting floods. You are an expert of all things around the grounds. I mean, you are invaluable to the club. You've been there, like you said, 17 years, the last two years as the lead green superintendent. But you have to deal with just the, the most beautiful piece of property in town is the Fargo Country Club. You know, down by the river, it's yeah. unbelievable. But our biggest asset is also our biggest liability. That thing floods every year, and you've had to fight a lot of floods. Talk about the experiences you've seen at the FCC over the years. Well, it uh, you know it goes all the way back to the uh, 2009 flood when when we had the record breaker, almost 41 feet. Um, you know, sandbagging the shop, the clubhouse, uh, golf shop, and cart barn, and and then it's been up and down every year since. You know, we've seen it all from. You know, just coming out of the banks all the way to the record. Yeah, and this year, uh, your experience with that was invaluable given the fact that we had a flood. It wasn't quite over 30 feet, but our 17th and 18th hole and the 10th green were underwater for a bit of time, and 
your whole crew, the whole crew knows exactly what to do to get that silt off the ground. And we were able to open the golf course May 5th. Talk about the process leading up to and preparing for getting all that stuff off the golf course and, and what goes into it. Because one thing that's kind of interesting is that ground is pretty doggone beautiful once it gets a silt off of it. Correct. Yeah. You know, once we get the uh, flood forecasts and predictions, uh, we go into, uh, depending on the height of the river, of course, uh, preparing pumps, preparing hoses and things like that. And, you know, once the river crests, uh, it's pretty much all hands on deck after that. You know, we're, we're washing as the re- river recedes, you know, yeah. just getting as much silt off the playing surfaces as possible. Sure, sure. Well, let's talk about your day to day. I think this is pretty interesting. For those who, uh, you know, ever never had a conversation with a green superintendent or don't know anything about it, talk about your, like, talk about your day. Like, what, de- what time does it start when you get to the office? What's your, what's your uh, daily habits? Well, my normal daily habits is, uh, you know, come in around 4.30, 5 o'clock every day, um, get the crew organized, get job board done, uh, get everyone out the door. And then from there, it's just uh, pretty much whatever needs to get done. Just go out and do it. Yeah. You know, we at the FCC, we, it's not an 18 hole property, right? We have uh, you know par three and two extra holes. I mean, it's, it, there's a lot of greens are 29, 29 total greens, right? Uh, 33 total with the practice, you know, the uh, championship 18, the par three course, and then our two practice holes and two practice greens. Now this year, we last two years, there's been construction equipment on the on the property pretty much the entire time. We went through a major irrigation project, uh, and you and the crew took it in house here the past few weeks, and took a driving range that needed badly needed to be redone. It was about twenty nine thousand square feet, and now it's forty five thousand square feet. Massive project. You guys took that in house and got it done. Just talk about the last couple of years, and and specifically for now. The irrigation project, how long had our irrigation been in the ground and, uh, you know, the whole process of, of getting the entire property irrigated? Yeah, the uh, the last couple summers have been extremely hectic, uh, going back to the start of uh, April last year when the uh, construction team came on site. Uh, you know, all the parts and products were coming in on a daily basis and getting all that organized and, and uh, working with the... Uh, the irrigation installation crew. Um, And then, you know, a couple months into that process, we uh, remodeled two of our uh, teas and green complexes on some practice holes as well. Um, So we had construction there last year and then, you know, wrapping up the irrigation this fall. um, We, uh, they just left the property last week. There's a total of 1,443 heads on property now. So there, I, I have, um, you know what I have, you know what I have in my house? I've got, I've, I have 20 sprinkler heads. I have 20 yeah. and they're unmanageable. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea how they work and they're going yeah. off in different directions. My wife is like, that's brown and that's green. Can you figure out the sprinkler? I said, no, I need Dave over here. I have no idea. He's got 14. How many, how many sprinkler heads did you say? 1,443 is the final count. <laughs> That is so many. And now talk about the technology of it. You can, you can control it. I mean, this is, this is the latest and greatest. Yes, it is. It's the Cadillac that's on the the market right now. Um, Individual head control. It can be operated from our phone or our tablets. Um, Like I said, individual head control, putting the water efficiently where we need to get it. Uh, We're still in the, you know, the final stages of actually dialing the system in, you know, getting our flow zones where they need to be and things of that nature weather station there's a new weather station on property now where we can monitor uh you know temperature wind speeds uh, precipitation dew points all that uh sort of information now talk about the driving range project um you guys took it in house talk about the process there you were in that skid steer for pretty much the entire back half of september yes yeah it was a it was a big project but like you had mentioned it's long overdue um going to over an acre of uh, range teeing area now. Uh, we also in, included a synthetic hitting mat to be used during, you know, times of minimal turf growth and uh, for our, our outside events throughout the year. So uh, it was it was a big project, um, but it, I think it turned out 
very nice. Incredible. You did fantastic, the whole crew. I think they, they had to be sore a couple of those nights because they were putting that sod in place, and that looked heavy. They, they asked me, yes. hey, hey, you want to take a rake? I'm like, you guys, you guys have it. You guys have it. You're good. You're good. But they, they got those, yeah. boy, those boys 50, had to be sore. 50,000 square feet of sod in two days, six semi loads. Wow. So it was, it was a project. What a grind. And the oh, guys did awesome. They did awesome. They did absolutely, they did fantastic. So, uh, some questions. So, you know, we talked about, or a lot of times when you close the golf course, the question is, hey, why don't you stay open, you know, push it a little bit. It's going to be 42 next week. Just keep it open. It's going to be 35 for I for a couple of days, but it'll be 45 next week. All this, like this year, it seems to be just there's a clean break. It is 50, yep. and now it's going, boom, mid-30s. But there are yep. some courses in the area. We actually pushed it an extra day to Wednesday. But there's some courses in the area that close down with some really nice weather still to be to be played if they were were allowed to talk about the closing process and why courses need to close a couple days before the actual weather turns because there's a lot to do for you guys to put the course to bed properly correct yeah I, you know ideally we'd love to have at least five to seven days to to get the course put to bed for the winter um you mentioned there's a lot that goes into it we're uh doing our final plant protectant uh, application spray application which we just wrapped up ours today on all our short grasses, greens, tees, fairways, uh, collars, approaches, and so on. Um, but then from there, you know, we do other things uh, like to throw a light overseed down just to get some seed in the ground for next year, uh, a light organic fertilizer to help get some organics into the soil as well. Um, and then we also top dress all our greens and tees with a layer of sand to uh, protect that plant throughout the winter months. And then, uh, you know, just some other minor things. We uh, we go around greens in open areas and put a 12-inch high snow fence around it uh, just to keep some snow cover, that blanket, over the greens throughout the winter months as well. So you're using, you're using the natural drifting of the snow to your yeah. advantage, right? You put these little snow fences up and, you know, with the, the unquestionable north wind, we're going to get at 35 miles an hour for about four months. You know, that, that allows there, that allows, honestly, what you want is drifting. You want drifting on the greens. You want that nice yeah. coverage right now. Some courses, they cover their greens and some don't. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. You know, we've, we've done the covering in the past. Um, it just comes down to, uh, you know, these open areas where they come up over the winter months, uh, we flood almost annually. So, uh, you know, those lower holes, it's, uh, we've had to remove a few covers from, tree canopies over the years, just getting them down and cleaned up. And then, uh, you know, we like to open as soon as possible in the springtime, usually during cooler temperatures. And then that fluctuation of the, the warmth that builds up under the covers and, uh, and then you, you shock them back with the cold temperatures. It just, it, it doesn't work ideally here for this property. For the, yeah, and every property is different, right? You'll have properties where the yeah. greens are completely exposed to the wind and, you know, covering the greens might be the right move, but if you're a, a wooded area and have some protection, you know, some natural protection, a few snow fences, you know, could do the trick. So the interesting thing, the interesting thing is, and people need to know is golf courses, we want snow. We want that snow cover. Yeah, a light layer of a six inch fluffy snow in, in November and, you know, staying just below freezing throughout the winter for a normal <laughs> uh, three to four month winter would be ideal. <laughs> Your eyes got big because you uh, don't normally get that. Correct. Yes. Mother nature is always in charge and we just uh, adjust and, and make the proper you know movements from what she provides. So let's talk about the perennial. I don't even know if that's the right word, but just month over month over month over month uh, employee of the month and your, uh, your buddy, your sidekick. There is not a goose on the property at the Fargo Country Club because there is a dog. It looks, if, if it's not, if it's a little dark out, you might think it's a wolf, but it's Milo. It's it's Dave's dog, yep. Milo. It's the club the club dog. Let's talk about, there's always, greenskeepers always have a pooba dog. Tell, tell, like, there's a functional reason why. Let's talk about your sidekick, Milo, and why greenskeepers always have their uh, man's best friend with them. 
Well, in, in our case here at the Fargo Country Club, it, it was kind of out of necessity. Um, you know, the geese, the goose problem had become an issue on along our lower holes along the river. And, uh, you know, the, the geese are, they're beautiful birds, but they're messy. We'll just say that. Um, so the, the purpose to get Milo was uh, primarily just to keep the geese off the property. And it, it turned into, uh, you know, my sidekick. He's always here with me and uh, cheering people up and keeping the crew in good spirits. So he's a, he's a beneficial uh, team member out here. That's for sure. Now, did you hear that he was outside the gates the other morning? I heard Jessica showed me the video. <laughs> he was a good boy. He understood. He was like, Oh, maybe I should be on that side of the street, but he, he followed nice. And, uh, we had a, we had a, we had a bonding moment at like six 30 in the morning that morning. Yeah. For only, uh, just a little over two years old, I think he's doing really well out here. So, Oh, he's a great pup. He's a great pup. He's a great pup. So, uh, Dave, what's next for you? What's what, what do you, what do you spend your time on in the winter? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, once we get the place closed, we kind of recharge the batteries for a couple weeks, three weeks, and then, uh, you know, it's right into next year. We're uh, we're starting in on budgeting right now. We're uh, doing our annual uh, fertilizer chemical program, you know, building that up for next year, uh, planning. And, and then, you know, at, here at the club, we do uh, winter ski trails around the property. Uh, we'll be doing some walking paths this summer, or excuse me, this winter. And then, uh, you know, the Chef Mac in the, in the clubhouse is picking out some awesome food. So the uh, clubhouse is always busy and keeping that parking lot down to asphalt throughout the winter. That, that is so true. This is a feat, folks. There is, not, there is not a better parking lot in town than the Fargo Country Club. I swear these guys are catching it before it lands. T talk about this process. It is almost, you guys take it on as a challenge, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's personal, you know you know, trying to keep it as clean and see those, uh, parking stripes throughout the winter. It's, uh, it's one of our winter goals along with everything else that's going on, you know, right. equipment service, uh, painting fixtures and, and just refreshing and getting ready for the, the next season. What's your favorite part of your job of your career? Uh, the, uh, every day is different. I mean, you come in each day, you know, with the weather, uh, the, the, the staff, the, the golf course, uh, just something's different every day and you, you just have to uh, make your best decision and uh, go with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What have you, uh, what have you, like what's, what's your goal for the FCC as far as the grounds and just overall, like what, what do you see the future for the club? Obviously we have uh, a river, right? That is always flowing to the North pretty strong. We've got some, mm -hmm. We, we've we've got some erosion happening on the 18th hole, uh, but what's what's your vision for the club? Well, you know, going forward, you know, possibly adjusting some things around, um, getting a little bit away from that river, so it's uh, not so much of a nuisance. I mean, it's always going to be a, an issue here with the, where we are in in town, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, just providing the best playing surfaces and experience for our members and their guests. Uh, the goal is, excuse me, the goal is to be the uh, ultimate best private club in the upper Midwest is my goal. Well, the effort you put forth day in, day out, Dave, uh, great to be a teammate of yours and, and uh, uh, appreciate all the work you put in day in, day out, bud. Thank you. You as well. All right. Hey, thanks for being on the Hole in One Show, man. Thanks for getting on. And, and I know you're busy right now, so thanks for taking 20 minutes. You're welcome. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. You got it. All right. Folks, it was great to have Dave Lorenz on. Uh, good insight on what it takes to close down the golf course, kind of the day in, day out of the head greenskeeper at the Fargo Country Club. Now, in the next segment, we're going to have the PXG trivia question as well as gridiron golf with Casey Crumwoody. Stay with us. Any bank can tell you they have a rock-solid commitment to agriculture. Bell can prove it. To this day, every Bell Bank branch is partially built with rocks we've picked from our founder's farm. But our roots in ag have grown more than a few offices. They've shaped who we are and formed our entire approach to banking. Let us prove it to you as you grow your farm and prepare your legacy for the next generation. Bell Bank, 
committed to ag. Golf to me is patience. It's weird to say, but golf is life. It is, it's the ultimate game of life. You know, it's an individual sport. You have to put in a lot of work to get minimally better. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You come back to improve. That's why I love golf is just every shot is, is different. That next round, that next shot, you know it could be that start of a story. I don't even want to say a game, it's more than a game. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hole in One Show podcast. It was great to have Dave Lorenz, FCC Greens superintendent, on in the first segment. A lot going on with closing up the golf course and a great season at the Fargo Country Club. Now, want to, again, say congratulations to our PXG trivia winner from last uh, the last show, Ian Foster. He won himself a PXG hat and a brand new, uh, well, another a dozen... PXG golf balls. So congratulations to Ian. He was right on it. I mean, the pot had been out for like 20 minutes, and Ian had the winning answer. Way to go, buddy. Thanks for watching the, the pod. Now, here's the trivia question this week. PXG trivia question this week. Again, you'll win a hat and a dozen golf balls. The home of PXG is in Scottsdale. The course is Scottsdale National. They have an unbelievable par three course there. Email me the name of that par three course. Email me at dschultzgolf at gmail.com. D-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z-G-O-L-F at gmail.com. The name of that par three course at Scottsdale National, and you will win a brand new PXG hat and dozen golf balls. It's now time for the most famous podcaster in the entire state of North Dakota. He's coming back. It is time for Gridiron Golf. <laughs> Casey Crumwoody, welcome to the show. Remote this time. We're not next to each other in, in, uh, in the office. This is the wild CRG, Gridiron Golf. Casey, what's going on? You're, you're putting in late hours here. You're, they're, they're, they're past five. What's going on, man? Well, hey, thanks for the nice segue there. Jeez, I got to slip you a couple $5, you. $10 Golly, bills or something. I miss you. I have a beer too. before. I, mean, I, I do like it better in person. I will say that. This is working really well, um, at least testing with you know production and everything before. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, we're here a little late. We've, we've had a, a couple of just grinder weeks, you know, just getting stuff done, trying to yeah. stay on top of it. And if I could do it from here, it was making life a little easier. Might have to be that way a couple other weeks moving forward, but... Yeah. Thanks for being flexible, man. There are a lot of trades out there grinding right now to get in before this. This is this is the cleanest break in the weather I've ever remembered. I mean, there is no – usually when we close yeah. the golf course, we, we're filming this on Wednesday. Today, the Wednesday is the last day of the golf course. Obviously, this pod will come out on Friday. But usually there's the, oh, come on, why are you closing the golf course? You can keep it open another week. Blah. This year, it's like, uh-uh, we're done. Everybody knows nobody's golfing because it's going from like 50 today to 32. I mean, it's over. And there's a lot of trades like yourself that are grinding to get some projects in before the, uh, before the, the deep freeze sets in. Yep. Yep. You're exactly right. And, and to have a clean break, I think for you is, is probably a kind of a nice thing. It, you don't have people, you know, knocking at your door wondering why you're shutting down so early. Uh, it makes life a little easier on guys, not only like yourself, but uh, superintendent Dave as well. So yeah. Uh, you know, in line with your point, I was talking to a guy from Watford City just about uh, two hours ago, I suppose now. They're already looking at five inches of snow on the ground with another five anticipated by 10 p.m. So it could be worse for us. It, you know, it's a little chilly, but we'll we'll take it, right? I'm not a big fan of snow, okay? Every single time it's below zero and there's a bunch of snow on the ground, all it does for me is remind me of Birdie Putt's mist. I mean, there was a chance. There was a chance. I had a chance in my life never to have to deal with winter ever again. And I guess I, I guess we could move, but parents are here. We have kids and stuff. But I just it's like, oh, man, the, the realization of turning the heat all the way up to full, it, uh, it's definitely a clean change of the season. Let's – Let's let's talk. Let's get through our gridiron golf. Let's talk picks. Let's talk what we did last week. I'm terrible still. I'm plus twelve. So are the fans. <laughs> You're plus two. So you had an even par week. I was two over last week, and so were the fans. Let's go right into our picks for this coming week. I need a. I, I need like a. I need to press on the back nine or something to get back to even par. In fact, can we press this week? So I, I'm, I'm making up the rules here, but can we make can we make this a double week? Can I press? 
I think we could do that. All right, we're Why pressing. Not? Good. Do, now, do do I have to give you like? Is this an alternate parallel universe where I have to give you strokes though? Or no, just no. based on how we're trending? Okay. No, no, no. We just it's just the, the holes the, the the holes are worth more. So uh, okay, a double just legal pick, straight up press. A double legal pick. You're either going to go minus six or plus six. So this is big time. It's Let's go. Uh, run through your first two picks. Okay, you want new picks first? We don't want to review anything yet. No, Just no review, no review. I need to. I'm fully focused You're on the press. Forward. When You're you press, forward. when you press, you don't even look at the front nine. You don't even think about it. All you know is you're down. <laughs> okay, and you need to get it right. Okay, let's do it, buddy. Birdie pick is in. Um, I'm going with Minnesota. They've got Michigan State coming to town. I'm going with Minnesota at Huntington Bank Stadium. They're going to be favored by seven points. Okay. Yeah. I am going to pick them to cover seven. Very good. Coming off a big win at Iowa. First time in, gosh, was it the 90s? 20 years? I think it was 99. I think yeah. it was Ferenc's first year if I heard that right. <sighs> the Gophers getting the W. There was a little bit of a controversy on a fake, like kind of a fake out. Like you put your hand yeah, up, the, dude. the fair catch. Yeah, no, that's yeah. a fair catch. You don't get to run anymore. So I'm sorry, yeah. Iowa fans. It didn't work out for you, but it, you know, fake call. Not to mention the the over under was 32 30 points and they weren't even close to that no so they weren't that's awesome they weren't my birdie pick is going to be florida georgia what is it the largest cocktail party in the country right exactly right okay i'm yep. gonna go georgia minus 14 georgia give them 14 georgia you're fine you just drop from number one in your po you're gonna go out there and you're gonna crush the gators okay that's my birdie pick which is actually two because it's a press all right i'll go into my yep. eagle pick Florida State, Florida FSU, and Wake Forest. I had Duke plus fourteen last week, and they were they were taking it to Florida State the first quarter, and then things turned around, and Florida State put the hammer down. I'm going. I love Florida State. I just do. Florida State minus twenty and a half. I'm giving a bunch of points this week, buddy. Florida State minus twenty and a half. I'm taking FSU. I also like that pick. That was on my my board of five, as we've been calling it. That makes the weekly cut. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so roll. Should we roll into my eagle? Your eagle and double. I'm going with the Pokes, man, out of the University of Wyoming. Again, they've they've been kind to me this year on the betting front. They are traveling to Boise State, who's given them five points on the Smurf Looking turf. The body work, on the blue turf. On the Smurf turf. I, you know, UND actually gave Boise a decent run for a good chunk of that game before Boise opened it up late in the, in the you know, second half. So Boise's a minus five. I'm going with Wyoming plus five. Taking the points Eagle on the road. Pick. Got it. it yep. Coach Bull. All right, and your double for, for double eagle. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to synergize here with my boys in uh, Scarlet and Cream, and hope that this is in fact momentum and not a flash in the pan. I like what I've seen the last couple weeks out of them. They've got Purdue coming to town so purdue is coming to lincoln uh-huh nebraska's favored by two and a half i see nothing in purdue's body of work i see nothing that suggests nothing. that that they can uh that they should you know do anything to upset nebraska but again i've said this all year anybody on nebraska's remaining schedule can beat them they can also beat anybody, but we'll see. I'm taking Nebraska minus two and a half. You're taking Nebraska minus two and a half at home on the on the double eagle press pick. That's a on massive the double eagle pick. press pick. That's a massive pick. That's a six point deal right there. All right, here's my double eagle press pick. Yep, I'm going Kansas State. They're at home against Houston. Houston is getting seventeen and a half, and they almost beat Texas last week. Obviously, Kansas State. Congratulations, you beat my frogs, which is not a great thing this year. It's not really impressive. Congratulations. You beat them by like 40 points, whatever <laughs> frogs are having a tough, I just, I'm plus 12 in my own game and my frogs are three and four. <laughs> I don't even know why we have this segment. I just, I'm embarrassed. There's going to be brighter days, buddy. I'm embarrassed. Well, hopefully this is the brighter day. <laughs> I need, I, I'm Which leaning. Is this our sponsor? <laughs> the beer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have one and I don't anyway, I'm taking Houston. I'm, I'm, I'm going Cougars. Houston okay. Cougars plus 17 and a half for my double eagle pick. One thing I did want to touch with touch. Oh, we got to do viewers. What, what are the, who are the viewers? I'll do the, I got the coin flip. Give me the birdie pick for the viewers. 
Okay, man. Let's do. We got to do the world's largest cocktail party. Yeah. For one of their picks. All right. Georgia is um, a heads. Georgia is a heads. It's a tails. Okay. They get Florida plus 14 and a half. 14. Okay. Viewers get Florida plus 14. That's fun because it'll be opposite of me. It'll be opposite of you. Okay. How about uh, the Eagle? Oh, man. What do we give them? Let's give them a chance to get back in this thing. Well, it's a press pick for them, too. Yep. Do we want to do... This was a dicey game. I Okay, I'm going to tee it up for you. You pick um, if we should do it. Let's go. Oregon is on the road. Oregon's number eight in the country, favored by six and a half, traveling into Utah. Oh, that's a good one. Well, it's Utah's number 13. Utah's ahead. Utah's number... Utah. Viewers get Utah. You see Utah why we do plus six and a half. Yeah. See, well, yeah, it's a coin flip. See, folks, this is what you do. I'm, I'm literally trying to beat a coin flip. Okay, that's the point of this <laughs> viewers thing, and I'm tied with the coin flip. So that's what this is about. All right, give me the double eagle pick. What are we going for? This is why I don't sports bet. By the way, same, same. If this was for actual money, I'd just be getting destroyed. Let's go. Uh, Another close close game, two ranked teams. Out of the ACC, we've uh, we've leveraged their talents a couple times this this year. Duke and Louisville. Mm-hmm. It's at it's at Louisville. Louisville's favored minus four. Um, I like the Duke. That's a good game. Yeah. I, you know, I would like Duke in that game. Duke based ahead. on their body work. Holy cow! Duke Duke is a heads. Nope, Louisville. Louisville. Okay, so Louisville plus four. Louisville. 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 Uh, Louisville plus four. There we go. Hey, I was watching. Uh, you talk about Utah, right? Caleb Williams is 0 3 against Utah. Heisman Trophy winner. Does he play? Like, if you're Caleb, this is like a. This, this has a relationship to golf. I have a feeling of live golf here. I have a feeling of like a Will Zalatoris or something where. You got to take the money, or do you protect yourself? Or, or if you're hurt and you have this offer, this money, do you take it, or you know, do you do you keep playing on the same tour? Do you keep playing on the same tour that's not going to pay you as much? What would you do? Well, Just, it's a good, good. That's a good question. I mean, I mean, some of some of the opt outs. I, I think the advent of that probably started around some of the first names I remember was. CMC Christian McCaffrey opting out like it must have been December 2016 Mm -hmm. right before the bowl game yeah for their bowl game and so I think to your point that trend has probably only gained steam now with that being said I mean he's making he's probably making seven figures right now already his insurance policy is off his insurance policy is probably off the charts um is there enough to play for for USC for him to ride it out? I hate that. That's kind of where we've gotten where with we college are. football because it's where we are, it, it, you know, right, wrong, or different. Our mentality growing up was always like, okay, you're playing come hell or high water. Yep. In his case, in the obviously the it's in the details. There's a lot of details, like you said, that that would make it easier for him to play or not. But it's it's a conversation now. It's a conversation. It, it is a conversation. It, it is a conversation. I, I'm going to say. He sticks it out. Do you think that the other Unless, players in the locker room would understand? Yes and no. Yes and no. Because I think a locker room at that level, USC, for example, and this isn't going to be the same at every Power Five because there are still developmental programs and there's there's going to be uh, – I think USC is going to be an L.A.-style program. By that, I mean there's going to be a lot of money. There's going to be a lot of endorsements. There's going to be a lot of – red carpet for them moving forward. I don't know if they're there yet. I think they still, I'd say, you know, the lion's share of that locker room is still guys that are fighting and clawing for playing time. Mm-hmm. So it would probably be polarizing, I think, at this point if he get, doesn't. Let's talk some Vikes. Uh, keep playing. Let's talk some yeah, Vikes. Dude. Hey, Kirk Cousins was the man against the Eagles. Or... Uh, 
Unbelievable. The Niners, yeah. The Niners, excuse me. He was unbelievable. He, he stood in the pot. I mean, obviously, I got to a tough start. He stood in the pocket all night long and delivered downfield. He, I mean, he really that did. guy, I, when, he is in, when he is in his flow state, he is a stud. And nothing nothing gets in his way. Nothing, nothing He's unflappable. And it's like, my man, where was this when all I needed you to do to clock, was clock the ball down at the end zone for the like first or second week of the season where you let 25 seconds roll off the clock for no reason? Like, how can there be? There's like two different guys. But he is unbelievable last week. And now there's calls. I mean, there, I think Cowherd was saying that maybe he should, uh, maybe they should, the Vikes should trade him. Yeah, the the Vikes, the performance that they've put on tape on on uh, Monday night against the Niners, man, I don't recall. Gives you hope. I, I, it gives you hope because I don't recall a team. Now, they've had some, some good teams over the years, and you, you highlight, you know, 98, 2000. Um, last year, there's some other teams in there with really good defenses under Zimmer, but I don't recall a collective effort at every level that was put at least that resonated with me quite like Monday night because they were, their back was against the wall. Mm -hmm. Everybody had the Niners, myself included. I didn't think it was going to be a game. And that was a, I don't want to be too, um, Oh man, I I don't want to be too like, (laughs) yeah. And I don't want to overblow it. Like, Oh, it was this crazy heavyweight fight, but it was a really hard fought game. And I don't think the Niners played bad. Minnesota just, took good shot they took a lot of body shots from them but delivered them they reciprocated you know for once and and watching the Niners defense like one on one in space just their defenders Fred Warner I, it seemed like there was three of them playing out there they were calling his name on every play mm-hmm. he was hitting hard um but to to I guess get back to your point about the Vikings performance I was just really impressed with the collective effort they put forth specifically Kirk and you're hundred percent right to see him hang in the pocket when his MO prior was certainly not that, you know, and not, not to take those. They're <laughs> in his face. Linebacker. I mean, he was barely They're getting, in his face, barely getting the, and he was delivering. Yeah. And that added like Addison's catch before the half. He just ripped it. Oh, out that his, was great. That yeah, was good. It was good. It was fun to see it the just, bikes win and they have a little bit of green space in front of them. I don't see anything in front of them. That is something they can't handle. I mean, uh, they got some. They got an opportunity after getting off to a tough start. Oh, well, the Vikings I think giving so. you hope. I think so. Give you a hope little, every yeah, year just I to mean, break your damn heart. We, we've we've heard this record playing before, no doubt. But you're right. I mean, if they could, they've got a little momentum. Let's see who they. Uh, they've got the Packers, huh? Is that right? They've got the Packers next weekend. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, October 29th in green bay okay well, let's go let's keep it going now you had me i you had me and the girls over kelsey was my wife played in a golf tournament this last weekend i don't know if anybody knows this but my wife's a big golfer just shot her uh best score of her life today 110 made a birdie on number four but the reason i bring this up is you know i'd had the kids on saturday because she had a big golf tournament now i'm you know, you, she used to follow me all over the country and and support me as I went out and played here the last couple of years. And now I, I have the kids. I have three. I've got three girls on a Saturday because my wife's playing her own golf tournament, which was awesome, fun. <laughs> anyway, I brought the girls over to your house and uh, yeah. hanging out in the garage. And we had some good college football on, and we had a good time. It was awesome. And what is that game uh, you have fun. on the wall? I could sit there all day and do it, especially if the other fridge is being opened. It, it's a uh, boss toss boss so toss for the folks and, and fans that haven't played it before it it's unbelievable i would parallel it to an iteration of uh bags. Oh, bean bags right bags. Where, yeah bags on but the wall you stand like 11 feet 12 feet away and it, it's pyramidal i suppose and the, the tight tightest uh window to throw into is worth five the medium window is three the biggest windows one and you just keep track like bags. But I, I, didn't like, I didn't like I mean, your strategy. McShane was there too. I didn't like you guys' strategy. You, I, I didn't say anything, but you were firing bullets into this thing. And I was like, no, 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 you need to kind of, this is just like a little 60 degree over the bunker. You got to throw it up with a little bit of moxie and let, let land in one of the, it was a fun game. I could have sat there all day. I, if, if I wasn't a father that day and have the responsibility, I'd have been there a while. <laughs> having a lot of fun. Well, that was maybe part of our uh, 
perceived strategies. We had been there maybe a little longer. <laughs> you, <laughs> just, you had cracked open the other uh, fridge too much. You just chucking these yeah. these bean bags and up against the wall. When when Nebraska when Big Red's on, you know, we yeah. juices are flowing a little more than they sometimes are. So yeah, you know, to heck, to heck with with uh, touch and, and feel shots. We're going straight up. We're going straight up power. Well, we got a big press week this weekend. We want to watch college football. What else is happening, bud? Well, you touched on the Vikes. That was that was awesome. Um, God, big week of college football again. One you thing say you're I gonna was ask always, me question. You're gonna ask me something. Yeah, I got. I was, I'm gonna pose it right now. Um, you know, one thing a, a lot of view, a lot of the viewers that know this, a lot of fans that know this. Uh, there, there's Dave the golfer. That's who. Ever, you know, a lot of people know, but there, I know Dave the football player too. There's and, a ton of fans of the pod, especially. Hi, and, mom. Hey, mom. What's up? Yeah, yeah. And now my parents, right? So at least we got a couple. But <laughs> yes. Uh, we're yes. You know. You were an excellent, excellent football player, no. and I wish more people knew that. You could sling the ball, you could hear the ball when you're when a, as a wide out when you're catching. When you can hear the ball coming, it's like, okay, well, I better make a break and get my hands on this because it's coming. Uh, but it was always just a dime and, and rifled in. So I was thinking about this when you were a senior. I, I don't remember us talking a ton about this. Did you ever give? Obviously, your your golf prowess at that point was you know awesome and yeah. and you, you were doing things nationally already at that point in in your life for football um that were no 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 golf i'm just i'm mm -hmm. saying that were that were paving the way for mm -hmm. incremental steps that were to come with college and so forth did you ever and i think the answer was yes but i want to hear it maybe from you and elaborate did you ever give serious thought to pursuing um football I as did. a QB at I the did. next level because you, you obviously absolutely could have well and I think at a high level not D1 D2 so North Dakota State <laughs> and UND I was talking with them and it, well I'd been talking with uh, Coach Bermel at Colorado State that was my best offer out of, out of college or out of high school for college golf and all in t full decision was pretty much made to go play college golf at Colorado State but at the at the last minute it was really tough and during the football season to say goodbye to football because that was the time of year that you know you had to commit to playing college golf and where you're going was in the fall and it was in the middle of the football season and so I was in talks with uh, Casey Bradley right and he was at North Dakota yep. State at the time I uh, didn't really have as much of a passing offense whereas UND did and so coach uh, Bubba Schweigert was the one I was talking to at UND and my dad at the time was doing the games for UND on the radio and uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, my dad was big time football. He was, I understand you're playing golf, you're doing good and all that stuff, but you know, just just don't sleep on football. You could have the most fun of your life for the next five years. You'll be in the best shape of your life. You'll create relationships and have teammates for the rest of your life. And and you'd have just the most fun ever for the next you know, five years. And he said, North Dakota's great. You know, I'm from the East Coast, but North Dakota's great. I, I, I've Obviously, I'm here. I, I stayed here. You'd have so much fun. We'd have a ball. You know, I'm doing the games. And so it was definitely a conversation at the dinner table for sure. But um, at the end of the day, decided to go to Colorado State. And uh, I don't uh, – and so freshman year at CSU, I'm in my dorm, and it's snowing outside. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm playing college golf, but I can't go play golf if it's snowing outside. And not only is it snowing outside my dorm win window, but I'm watching UND win the national championship on ESPN. And so at Against that Grand Valley State. At that moment, right? my dad's calling the game. At that moment, I was like, I, did I make the right call? Because I can't go practice. I'm not getting better at golf. And, you know, this team I would have been on at UND, I, I would have gone to UND is winning the national championship. I probably would have redshirted, but I'd at least been there and, you know, part of the team. And it was at that moment, actually, that I said, well, okay, I'm either going to go back, I'm either going to do something crazy and go back and play college football next year, or I need to get further south and play uh, golf year-round and, and start to get better. So anyway, yeah, the answer to your question was, yeah, it was, it, it was a tough, really tough thing to give up back in the day because – it was everything. I mean, I mean, I remember using that. You know, my dad's gone now. He passed in 2018. I remember having perfect spiral contests. We'd call them. Uh, we'd have <coughs> perfect spiral contests in the front yard, and we would just zip it back and forth. And if there was any wobble, you lost. You lost the. You lost the contest. And I remember those uh, those things. And um, yeah, it's 
it, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's cool. It, it, it's well, it it, it looks it's back on the fond me- you know? yeah, fond memories, and and it's uh, you know, enjoy it while you can. You know, hey, look, if you're a dad, yeah. if you're a dad, you got a young kid, go play catch with them in the front yard because yeah. it's going to mean the world to them. And you know, my dad popped up and uh, was massively successful in his career, but really didn't get his break big time until he's in his mid fifties, and he had the talent the whole way. The whole way he had the talent to do what he did when he was in his mid fifties. But I do think one of the reasons why it wasn't until his mid fifties was because he was too busy being a great dad, having those perfect spiral contests, um, coaching FM athletics, uh, being involved in every damn thing I did. He didn't know a dang thing about hockey, but he was at every single hockey game. I uh, really didn't know anything about golf, <laughs> but he, he supported it as you know, day in, day out. And, uh, um, uh, you know, in fact, when I transferred from Colorado State to TCU, Coach Bermel at CSU was not going to release me. He was he was pissed. He was pissed because I ended up being like I was like the second best golfer on the team as a freshman. Martin Laird, who's still in the PGA Tour, was the number one guy, Scottish guy, and I was transferring down to TCU because I needed to play golf year round. Mm-hmm. And Coach Bermel was pissed. And Dad got on the phone and was like, "Coach, why are you going to hold the kid back? Just let him just just go ahead and just give him a release. It's not a big deal. All right, just let him go." And so. Dad, dad helped kind of work, work the coach over a little bit to let me release and go play at TCU. But anyway, dad was, yeah, he was in my corner all the way. And, and, uh, back to your point. Yeah. I mean, that was a, definitely was because of dad, really. That was the biggest thing. I knew I wanted to play professional golf and I knew I had a chance. It was really making the decision to, you know, go away from those perfect spiral contests, you know? Well, you, you perfected it. Cause I, I'm still convinced and we still talk about it. And, you know, as, legends grow the further removed you get from some of that stuff but we still talk about the ball you threw and it, like uh, i'm convinced it would have you could have sustained and played we, you know we just, at a very high level we just had a match with ndsu and i told the fcc versus ndsu and it's all these guys who are like 35 to 50 years old and i sent him the toby keith i'm not as good as i once was but i'm as good once yeah. as i'll ever be i was like this is our theme song and so yep. hey we could go to the parking lot right now and i could probably whip a few 40 yarders i just want you to know i won't be be able to lift my arm <laughs> yeah tomorrow day. it'll be like oh actually not tomorrow it'll be like four or five days but it will it will last it will last yeah no, i appreciate the question no that was uh fun no, memories like for sure too, man. Yeah. absolutely for sure. all right well we'll see how we do this weekend we'll that check in good. this is a press week this is a press week thanks for uh thanks for remoting in from the office and i'll let you get back to work go build a building make sure you get the get some things done bud well, appreciate the time, man. Thanks for letting me do it this way, and we'll keep in touch, okay? All right, Gridiron Golf, Wild CRG, Gridiron Golf. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, buddy. And thank you, folks, for being with us on the Hole in One Show podcast. It was great to have Dave Lorenz on. And as always, Casey Crumwoody, some reminiscing and having some fun here on the pod. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Have a great week.